Now, another key ally of the US, France, has been spied on by Washington. According to the latest WikiLeaks top secret document drop, the country's most high profile figures have been targeted. Our correspondent, Alexei Yaroshevsky, has got the details. This new batch of documents released by the WikiLeaks provides more insight on how Washington is actually spying uh, on its close allies. This time it's France. And uh, according to the documents, uh, three consecutive presidents of France, Jacques Chirac, Nicolas Sarkozy and uh, Francois Hollande, have all been spied on by the uh, NSA. Now, the intercepts released by the WikiLeaks so far, um, they pretty much touch on the broad range of international issues. Uh, one of the intercepts um, talks about uh, how uh, Francois Hollande was planning a secret meeting with the German opposition without even uh, Angela Merkel knowing about this uh, regarding uh, the Eurozone crisis and the potential exit of uh, Greece from the uh, Eurozone. Another intercept um, also spoke about um, uh, the previous president, Nicolas Sarkozy, uh, actually willing to uh, be engaged in the peace talks between Israel and Palestine without the consent of the United States. Uh, there have been some, several more intercepts. For instance, um, Jacques Chirac lobbied being for certain positions within the UN uh, uh, on his personal phone in a talk with his um, advisor. So uh, pretty much it's, um, it's a very wide range of different uh, issues. And the question is, of course, how France will react to this, giving the high level exposure and the WikiLeaks are saying that this is not the end. They will reveal more and more documents with time passing. Well, to discuss this uh, a bit further, we're joined now by former CIA case officer Robert David Steele, who's also written extensively on intelligence. Thanks very much for coming on to the programme this evening. Um, look, it's not the first time, is it, we've heard about Washington spying on its key allies. Why does it do this? Well, you have to remember that NSA is a money-spending machine, and it also does not provide a return on investment. Uh, secrecy is essentially toxic. And I think the French also have something to, to consider here. Uh, the world is moving toward open source. The more people that can share information and talk about information, the faster you get to creative solutions. Uh, I think Europe needs to understand that the United States is not its friend. And Europe needs to think seriously about removing U.S. bases from Europe. And it needs to think seriously about creating a European intelligence community that is able to devise strategy, policy, acquisition and operations in public, in the open. What sort of fallout do you think we'll get then from this? How do you think Paris might react? Uh, by and large, with very little fallout, because Paris does secret operations and the French steal from the United States. There's an excellent book called Friendly Spies uh, that talks about how Germany and France do much more industrial espionage in the United States than China does. Uh, so this is a two-way street. And I think for the viewer, what you really want to consider here is not necessarily that NSA is doing something outrageous against France. But the whole issue of secrecy versus open source, I believe that we're at the end of the industrial era of the technological paradigm. I think we need to seriously consider shutting down secret intelligence agencies and reviving something that we haven't done for centuries, which is having open discussions with all facts on the table. Do you think that the French leaders were probably aware of these NSA activities? Almost certainly. They're not naive. So I, I, mean, I asked that question because when Angela Merkel's phone was tapped, she came out initially and said, oh, goodness me, I'm shocked by all this. And, and then a bit later on, she said, well, yes, I did know something was going on. Are we expecting a similar sort of reaction from the French? Look, these people are all on the banker's payroll. Uh, this is a contrived conflict. They're all on the same team. It's called the 1% team. And they're all against us, the 99%. You mentioned some quite radical reforms that you said would have to take place uh, in order to solve this problem. But given that the 1% then are in charge and benefiting, using your argument, how likely is that to happen? Well, it's funny because I think 2015 is a pivot year. Uh, here in the United States, electoral reform is being discussed just as much as it is in the United Kingdom. Uh, and there is a clear feeling that parties are toxic. Uh, political parties are essentially factions that leverage secrecy, they leverage corruption, and they are generally screwing the public. Um, 
I believe that we're getting very close to a number of billionaires, including the black sheep billionaires in, in Germany and, and, and southern France, uh, realizing that 100 percent corrupt government is not working for them. So my bottom line is the world is changing now. And the government paradigm, the secrecy paradigm, they're both dead. And rising up is a form of hybrid governance with openness at its root. I think we're going to see major changes in power. And frankly, I hope that Greece leaves the European Union. It's a tough question, though, but can you give us a time period for when this is going to happen? By 2020 at the very latest. All right, we'll leave it there. Look, it's good to talk to you. That was um, Robert David Steele, a former CIA case officer, but also a man who's written extensively on intelligence issues. Thank you.